All right. I'm hoping my poor little camera can pick this up. Let's look at, let me bring this up, and let's look at, because we're talking borders now, right? So I've done me puff up around my characters. So now uh, we're talking borders. What are we going to do? Now, there's several things. Oh, my back's killing, so I've got to sit down a minute. Yeah. Uh, borders. Okay. If you um, are working in the simplest form, there's a few things you can do. Going back to the last few videos where you saw me do the serpentine stitch, okay, on the cross here, you could use an, a friction pen or a Chaco chalk. I prefer a friction pen because it comes out far easier. You need to sort of like, you know, take, it, take into account there's going to be a quarter of inch lost on this side to do with the binding. Yeah? Uh, and therefore, you need to come a quarter of an inch out from your inside uh, frame. So that you're left with a uh, gap that is equal. And then you could draw yourself with a friction pen a line down the centre of your border, taking those bits into account. And you could do one or two uh, serpentine stitches down your border. That's one thing you can do. Uh, the other thing you could do is, again, use the friction pen, you could draw yourself a, remembering we, you've got this gutter either side of a quarter of an inch, yeah, having drawn, drawn those lines on, you could then draw yourself triangles up and down or whatever, so you could do a, a, a simple straight stitch triangle all the way you know you would need to measure it mark it so you've got it nice and even yeah and uh, work out how you're going to go around the corner as well use the friction pen and draw it all out first and then do it you could do it that way or uh, if you were like quite happy uh, maybe using a free motion foot as i did around our characters because it, this does not have to be absolutely bang on. This is just a way to keep our border uh, attached to the back and the backing, yeah, before we go any further. Uh, what I will do, I haven't done it yet, but what I will do is on this inside uh, frame is go round and just stitch in a ditch because I haven't done that yet. So I will do that. So... The only free bit will be from there to there, yeah? Um, the other thing you could do, as I was saying, if you're happy, to just slowly, take it slowly, yeah? You could, uh, for example, um, on this line, you could say, well, free motion, I'm going to come across and I'm going to free motion around a leaf. It depends on what fabric you're using. Then I'll go another three inches and free motion around the leaf. Then I'll go another three inches and free motion around the leaf. You can just literally use your pattern as a guide to do a bit of free motion in. You could do that. That's another option. Uh, you could also do ruler work in as much as you could take a big oval, a big uh, semicircle ruler and again coming away from your quarter of an inch you on your line that you've drawn you could then do big uh semicircles yeah you could do that i mean there are a plethora of things you can do um but you know what i'm gonna do because this is my quilt yeah what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use i'm gonna do some ruler work Okay, I'll show you it. You've seen me do it before on other things. And I am going to do uh, a certain type of ruler work along here. Yeah? Um, 
as I say, the next thing I'm going to actually do is go and stitch in a ditch. I might just, if I, have I still got my free motion on? I might do it free motion, but I am certainly going to stitch all around the outside with white cotton uh, to just hold down this margin all the way around. This is not easy. I'm trying to decide because there's so many options. I found something that I think I might want to use, which is a rope design. Um, and I've just marked a half an inch line all the way around my quilt from the central panel uh, to give me a top line to work from, which I've tested with my ruler, which gives me plenty of space and makes it more or less central. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to do a straight design. The other thing I would say to you is I have made my decision that I want to use a dark purple. Now I know there's loads of us we were all chatting about and I asked you which the light, the lavender or the royal purple, what would you use for what reason? And there is no right answer because the lavender works so well with what is already on the quilt. But the royal purple actually will give a definition to the edge of the quilt. There is no right answer, but it, so it is, again, entirely your choice. Okay, so let's see how we get on. So, uh, what I want to show you at the moment, before I go any further, uh, number one, uh, whoops, I have to rewind a bobbin yeah so because if you watched it's probably too long now i've got a pair of scissors somewhere yeah i'm just gonna oh i can find it cut that short um oh i'll use that piece of shape but basically uh i just wound the bobbin now it's actually practically as good as you would find um if you were buying bought bobbins, uh, you know, you can see it's perfectly wound. So I am just going to plop that in, paper perfect, so you make a P, bring it round, turn it in and cut it off. Pop your cover. What have I got under here now? Yeah, because I'm going to do three motions, so that's right, isn't it? Make sure you get it right way round, Jack. And shut that under, that's good. Now, let me just show you what I put in there. It's very hard to see. Uh, I need to put this... Have I got some dark? Oh, I'm just going to take my duster, because it's a darker colour, so you can see, right? Can, can you see how fine... If you can't see it, it's because it's so fine, yeah? What I use in my bobbin... Okay, this is, it's uh, a company called Superior Threads, that's the company, but the name of it, the brand name of it is Bottom Line, and it's 60 weight, and this is what I always use, whether I'm piecing, or embroidering, or free motioning, I always use this, Superior Threads Bottom Line, you can get it in different colours, but the majority of the time, I'm using white. And it is 60 weight, so it is as fine as you like. So there's one thing. Okay, let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Uh, the next thing is, I decided to use royal purple as the uh, outside edge, the binding. So what I'm going to do next on the border, I'm going to use royal purple... This is an embroidery thread, but it doesn't matter at this stage. I'm going to uh, be doing ruler work. Uh, I quite like the fact that this has got a bit of silkiness to it, so that's what I'm going to use. Now I'm ready. I can uh, get rid of things that I don't want. That's all set up in there. I can put my... Uh, even though it's ruler work, I can put my uh, So Steady Grid Glider back on. I will give it another little squirt it's just you know little bits of that silicon that i like to make it extra blighty and uh, just you know 
wash that in and at the same time stick that down yeah so now we're all especially under there we're all glazy and all brilliant starting to work uh i am going to put my gloves on and hang on that bit's not stuck as well as i wanted to and get my quilt and find a line and now as i said to you at the end uh, you know in the last uh, few minutes I have drawn, I'll bring this forward, I don't know, I've got to find a place to start, but I'm hoping that this will come out on camera, yeah, I have drawn half inch line all around my quilt so I've got somewhere to start, yeah, I'm going to probably start in the left hand bottom, Ooh, making sure that everything is together, oh, and bringing up my quilt so it's not dragging anywhere uh, oh I don't know if you can see this but right here I've got a thread to cut there come on cut your thread bits I've got a thread to cut there but um, right at the beginning in my video about adding borders yeah I said to you okay I cut enough to do the side, the top and the side and I said to you, oh I'm probably going to have to pattern match because I don't want to cut another long length of border and waste material so right here, that's my join so that's my pattern matching and that's my join as we go along, this will disappear you didn't see it in any other video I've showed you you were like, oh I didn't, I know I didn't see it <coughs> I'm pointing it out to you now so you can see it, yeah, but once I've done this border, that's going to disappear as well. And that just saved me a load of fabric because uh, I love this fabric, so I want to keep as much as I can to do something else. <sighs> All right, so I've done a bit. Uh, I've got to go back and finish the corners. Not quite sure how I'm going to do the corners, to be honest, but I'll figure something out. So... <sighs> Here we are then. Um, just checking on things. I'm using purple, as I said, uh, because I'm going to do the dark purple um, border uh, edging, binding. What did I call it? <laughs> and this is this is uh, a rope ruler. Okay. I got my ruler foot on. I've just come down here. I'm gonna have to sort something out on that corner, but I've just come down here and uh, I line it up. And oops, not lining it up very well. I got certain markers that help me line things up. I want to make sure that I'm lined up to. The majority of things and then I can bring it in. There. Ah, right, okay. So I am um, we we when we're doing um ruler quilting for a rope especially, you do have to go backtracking over some of the stitching you've just done, alright? Oops. I might have just come away there and I've got to backtrack now oops, backtrack now to my other corner yep and I'm going to go the other way this time so that I end up in a different place uh, keeping everything nice and straight um, and obviously the answer is to keep the ruler foot pressed against the outside edge of the ruler. Try not to deviate. And move the ruler along, keeping everything and straight. I've got a guideline here and a guideline here for the previous one I've just done. And then I want to keep the top of the ruler at the top of my border. 
That's what I've decided to do it in the end. And then... Off we go again. And then backtrack to that point. Now you're always going to get, as I just did on that last bit, a bit of a double line because, uh, you know, I'm not perfect at doing this, but I try. And it's like everything, uh, the more you do it, the more you practice, the more you do it, the better you become. I think I've only ever used this ruler once before when we were making the uh, covers for the machines. So I'm not really very good at it yet. But I'm getting it. I'm better with other rulers than this one. But I'm getting it. I'm backtracking to my A1. Right. Bring it over. Let's move that thing out. As we go, line up my top. We bottom that one. That's pretty good. Uh, where did I stop that time? Yeah, so I'll go across the top this time. Yeah, I see that one was perfect. <laughs> you know, you you get. In the swing of it, move it across. All right. So this is how we go, and this is just a little bit of ruler work. I'm not going to show you too much because basically, at the end of the day. Oh, I went a bit sick saggy there, so on the way back, I'm going to straighten it out. Now, I have made a mess there, it's gone zigzaggy, see, I'm not going to rip it out because, thankfully, this background is very forgiving because there's lots of little lines on it, so <laughs> it's not like I'm doing it on a plain um, thing where it's really noticeable. Uh, that's why I thought I'd give it a go because... This uh, background is very, very forgiving. Alright, so we have now uh, finished doing the um, <clears throat> top quilting on the borders. So the next thing that we need to do is to finally cut and square up the quilt so it's all the same size. Then what we will do is zig round the edges to keep them all nice and firm and together and then we will start to cut the binding and sew on the binding and I'll show you how to finish the binding in almost, you know, a perfect manner so it's uh, the best way, There's, it'd be hard for you to tell a start and a stop. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I can say at the moment so please... Uh, Share, like, hit the bell, subscribe and come and join us on Facebook in Crafty So-and-Sos. Thank you.